Welcome back everyone. The purpose of today's video is to take you through some unusual whales features. In particular, we're going to look at charting that are a little bit lesser known, but no less valuable and holding utility. So I'm going to take you through that. For those of you who don't know, my name is Peter Tarr on Twitter. It's Profits Taken and you can see this is the Profits Taken channel. I'm a former licensed options and derivatives specialist as well as a licensed stock trader and I am a private equity fund manager. So let's dig right into today's topic. We're going to take a look at the charting feature, see how it works, what it's all about, look at some of the different features within it, how to access it, etc. This is a quick and simple video just to help you get a little bit more value out of your subscription with Unusual Whales if you are using them or just to show you some of the different features. So let's dig right in. So as you see, we're just on the flow page of Unusual Whales, which is page that I use more than any other. And we're going to go right over here to menu. So the menu is going to drop down. You see, we have a lot of different options and I'm going to take you through some of these in the future, in future videos, but we'll go one by one. So it's asked about the live charting and what that's all about. Okay. Well, live charting, let's click on it to get there. And here we are. So what we see is we see a chart of the spy and this actually works very similar to what you see in your broker charting. Now I get often asked about what broker I specifically use. I use interactive brokers. I prefer interactive brokers for executions. Some people like their charting. Some people don't like it as much, but executions, they're so much faster in my experience. So I will leave a link below if you want to take a look at interactive brokers. People love them, but let's take a look here and see what we have. So we've got the spy chart up in front of us. I do like this red line. That red line shows you where we closed, but we'll go in order here. So this is where you enter the symbol. So let's just say we were looking at something else like AMD, right? I've talked a lot about AMD this year. I'm bullish on AMD long term. Let's uh, let's pull it up. And AMD is actually one of my recent ones. Hit enter. And now we're on AMD. And you can see that it actually closed up. So you saw in SPY, it was a red line. That means you closed down in the last minute candle. Here we closed up on AMD. And you can see the price, get a little bit more data. You see how we closed on the day and it's up four cents, up 0.04%. So that's where you enter the symbol. We're going to take a look over here. So draw, what does that mean? How to use that? Well, you can apply what I'm showing you here to your brokerage or if you're going to use unusual whales. And I'll talk a little bit more about how this could be a convenience over your brokerage. Uh, but again, it's up to you. It's whatever is, whatever you're going to use to the best of your ability and that you find most convenient is what you should use. But let's take a look here and this does apply elsewhere here. So we go to draw and you get an option for all kinds of drawings. Now, some of you already know what the utility in having drawings is. And some of you might be thinking, why would I want to draw something? Okay. So let's just click on one here. So we click on a chat bubble and I'm going to click right here to leave a chat bubble. And I will just enter something basic right now. Test, right? And so you can see that I could change the font, bold font it, go to italics, change the font style, change the color, all sorts of things. But I'm just going to leave this basic and boring uh, as test. And that's because I'm boring. Um, so let's go on. We have that situated there. Why would we want to use something like that? So it just helps you as a reference. It's kind of like anything. Imagine you had a physical journal and you were leaving notes in it. You know, you can look at something like an arrow. So if you're trying to show somebody share screenshots or leave something that would get your own attention, you could say, well, look, the AMD kind of broke down with the markets here and I click here to leave an arrow. I'll draw that arrow a little bit more nicely and say, okay, so I'm going to put that there and then you can grab it and move it up and that'll just draw your attention or perhaps someone you're sharing with. And of course you could rotate the arrow, do all sorts of things, expand it, make it yours. The idea is to mark this up in a way that drives utility and helps you out. So you have all sorts of things. You have different symbols, charts, lines, etc. You can add text to what you're looking at. You could do a lot of markings on this. I see some people go wild with that. When I'm working with partners, that's very helpful. So you get the idea on the markings. Let's take a look here. You could change the crosshair. So you have the crosshair and right now we have the heads up hidden, but if we want the heads up on, see how this information just popped up. So that tells you a lot of helpful data on a per candle basis. And so you could see the open, the close, the high, and also the volume during that time period. So in this time period, we're looking at one minute time periods. You see the change in price and you get an idea also on the volume. We also have some data down here that we'll talk about in just a moment. And of course you can pull up info, right? So see what happens. 
you might just prefer this because it's a little bit smaller to look at here. You get a lot of that same info just by hovering around. Some people really appreciate that. Just have that floating over. Whatever's easier for you and more efficient, whatever your eyes are trained to, you can go for. But I like the fact that that feature exists. So I'm going to turn that off just as we scroll around. But I do like that. So let's just turn info off. Info is off. And let's move across to the right side. So we have a good understanding now of all the things you can do. And you can go to list view, grid view, change things. So here we have candles. Of course, we're looking at candles. You guys are all familiar with candles, right? So there's red candles and there's green candles. The reason we call them candles, not to go over the basics on charting, but you can see there's wicks. We call these wicks, these little lines, and this is sort of the body of the candle. And if you're not familiar with that, definitely worth looking up because most people display candles. It's good for you to understand. And so here you could change it to bars, colored bars. So you can see these are bars. Some people prefer that look. And essentially, this is just going to go down. I'm not going to go through all of them, of course. Some people prefer the broken line graph style, right? So you could go to whatever you prefer. And there's even aggregated data. Again, before you get into aggregated, just make sure, and this is a little bit of a tip for everybody. Let's say that you just pick something down here because you like the look better. Make sure you understand what it means because this is different. The data is displayed differently and it might throw you off. If you were to look at something like this and assume that it is the same as a regular candle, you can get yourself into trouble. Some of these are actually called bricks. There's all sorts of different things that you could look at. You can see we're changing there and it could get you confused. So candle is probably what you're used to, but you have a lot of options and just know if you're going to anything that's aggregated, make sure that you understand it. Look it up. It's like everything, right? Always take a moment to look things up in stock trading. I know people are anxious to make trades, but if you do something without understanding it fully, small details can have an exponentially large impact on the trade or your understanding of what you're doing. So this is the time aggregation period that we move to here. Like I said, we're on one minute. So this is what happened over a one minute period on the chart. And then we can move to two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15. We can look at the daily chart, right? To see how this worked. And then just go right back. So you have those options. And again, in your native broker, you know, or if you're using something like Interactive Brokers, IBKR, which again, there's a link to in the description, or a lot of people use Thinkorswim. You're going to have these options uh, for the time periods and, and a little bit more. But, you know, to me, the benefit here is that particularly if you don't have a brokerage, this is a godsend because if you don't have a brokerage and you're only using unusual whales and you're not trading yet, you're just learning, it's going to be expensive for you to go elsewhere and pay for subscriptions. It just makes more sense. Do your charting and get familiar within the platform. Or if you're in unusual whales and you don't want to load up your brokerage for whatever reason and you just find this more convenient, that's why you would use the charting within unusual, within unusual whales. Or if you just prefer it, it's always good to see different things and see what you prefer. Comfort is very important. You never sacrifice data, right? If you've, there's data that's critical to you that you don't get at one place, you do it another, then go use that, right? But from there on, it becomes a comfort item. So then you can add studies and there are a ton of studies. You can actually type them in here. So if I'm looking for, let's say, just a common basic one like RSI, <clears throat> I can click on that, right? So if I load the RSI and just click on it, that pops up down here, right? And then there are a lot of other studies, of course. I'm not going to exhaust them all. You guys know the different studies, Bollinger Bands, Cumulated, um, just it goes on and on. But there's quite a few here. MACD is another popular one. I'm not really big on using studies. Um, there are very specific scenarios where I do use studies and I teach that through ProfitsTaken.com. But some people love them. And that's why we have options. That's why you have features. It's so that if you do like them and you do use them and find there's utility, the option's there for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can see VWAP is here as well. That was another favorite for people. You'll see the VWAP line go right on the screen. What if you wanted to remove one? Well, the way to remove it is just right click on it, delete study. Right click, delete study. Pretty easy. I do like that. I appreciate when you can right click and interact. So the alternative would be I'd have to go back up here, find the study, click on it again to remove it. It's just a time waster when you're moving from one area to another doing a lot of work in the evenings. And I know for myself personally, I spend hours every day looking at charts. If things aren't convenient and I'm losing a few seconds here and there, looking at every single chart I pull up, I lose a lot of time and it's just frustrating. So then of course you can actually mark events, which is really cool, I have them all on. And events you should know. You can mark earnings, dividends, splits, insider trades. That's all pretty cool. It's simple toggle, turn them all on and off. You could set up alerts. 
So just the way you would with another brokerage set up alerts, you could turn them on and off here in unusual whales. You can have alerts, price alerts on your stock, etc. And then finally, there are just settings, the basic settings, you know, range selector. Do you want to be able to see extended hours? For those of you who don't understand, extended hours means seeing aftermarket and pre-market trading. I think that's a very good idea to see because it helps you understand where the stock is moving before the market so that you can be engaged. But sometimes you want to turn it off. You have the options and you have access preferences and a little bit more information here. And of course, day night theme. Do you want to go this dark background? That's night. Do you want to go day? Some people really prefer this again, preference, very important. Again, to me, the utility is just a matter of convenience. If you use it, if you don't, you don't. But there may be times when you find it more helpful when you want to be able to use it. And of course, don't forget, we have another few things down here. If you ever want to just clear out all your drawings, like I had up here, one button. See where I clicked? I just click clear all drawings, right? And then you can restore default parameters, etc. There's a lot more than you can that you can add here and add volume profiling, etc. Um, and like I said, you can right click, you can go to edit studies, delete studies. So it's just a matter of convenience. And particularly for those of you who are watching this, probably users of unusual whales maybe you didn't know this feature existed maybe you did but you never clicked on it you didn't get to understand the basic or general utility this gives you an idea if you want to learn more you can follow me at profitstaken.com if you're looking to sign up with unusual whales use the coupon code profits taken that'll get you a discount and of course if you want to learn more from me directly visit profitstaken.com all right everyone i hope this was helpful to you and we will talk very soon